we were actually just trying to improve our nutrition at first. But what we actually ended up doing was creating the most delicious egg that we ever made. And I think the taste and quality of our eggs really spoke out to our customers. And that resulted in a 30% repurchase rate across all channels, very thankfully. Well, every morning I like to have a good quality egg to start the day. And I'm not the only one. For the Korean company, Gangung Bio, it's a must. Welcome to this episode of Future Feed Talks. My name is Iris Hoffman, editor for Poultry World. And next to me is Tim Yu. He is director in marketing and sales for Gangung Bio. And his goal is to make the best quality eggs suitable for also the online market. Well, hi, Tim. Nice uh, having you here. Hi. Very good to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, can you paint me a picture first of the Korean egg market? The Korean egg market? Uh, well, as many people can assume, the Korean egg market is still largely conventional. Over 90% of uh, eggs is in the conventional systems. But uh, we are making some changes in 2025. Uh, we recently started uh, numbering our eggs one, two, three, and four. Uh, one being free range, two being cage free, and three being conventional but 750 square centimeters per bird, and four being conventional with 500 square centimeters per bird. And uh, come September 2025, uh, number four is going to be completely outlawed. So that means we're going to see about a 20 to 30 percent drop in production. Yeah. And uh, it seems that uh, consumers are taking great interest in uh, cage free eggs and animal welfare these days, mm -hmm. much like the direction that Europe is going. And if you look at if you go to a supermarket and look at the shelf space of eggs, you know that they don't sell much cage free eggs, but cage free eggs take half of the shelf, shelf space. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and even free range eggs are quite apparent in most stores. So I would say we are kind of on the verge of what Europe experienced many years ago when they went cage free and uh, what do you call it, the enriched cages. But of course, Korea is characterized by its small land and dense population. So I believe that free range is never going to be a major part of the egg market, but I do believe that the shift towards cage-free eggs is coming, whether producers like it or not. If you look at multinational companies like Costco and McDonald's, they've already uh, said that they're going to go cage-free by 2025. And us, Kanong as well, we are preparing a state-of-the-art cage-free cage farm facility. And uh, we hope to break ground in the coming months. Well, that sounds very good. Do you think that the customers in Korea want different types of eggs than, for, for instance, in Western countries? Uh, the Korean market is actually very interesting when it comes to specialty eggs. Uh, we have fertilized eggs, and oh, yeah. people think that fertilized eggs are better for them, so they buy them at a higher price. But as a producer, I refuse to supply okay. fertilized eggs because I believe non-fertilized eggs are cleaner mm -hmm. and they do stay fresh longer. And of course, we have some of the interesting specialty eggs like egg, uh, chickens, eggs from chickens fed with garlic or soybean paste or oriental medicine. Yeah. And and these, uh, and these products, their uh, selling point is something of a feeling kind of pull. Mm. But rather, uh, I want to offer something more concrete to customers, such as nutritional value and a difference that they can taste. Even when you crack open an egg, I want our eggs to be uh, noticeably better than our competitors with better how unit and uh, glowing yolk and uh, even with a little foggy cloud of CO2 in the egg white. Oh, yeah. That's the perfect egg I like to see. So how do you ensure that quality in the eggs? 
Oh, to ensure quality, we have a government official in-house that checks our eggs every day, and he uh, takes a sample and grades them. And uh, our grading system is one plus, one or two, but usually no one grades number two eggs. No, are you one to one plus? Yeah, we, yeah. we want the one plus, but unfortunately not many uh, brands can do one plus because they get their eggs from a number of farms. And once they put the one plus up there, if uh, one farm falls a little short in quality, then they have big trouble in their supply chain. Yeah. But since we have our own farm and uh, so far we've only sold our own eggs, one, getting one plus grade has not been an issue and we still remain uh, the farm that produces the most graded eggs. And alongside the official government checks, uh, we also have uh, our own internal checks, checking for the same factors, but in a different environment, just so we have a cross-checking system with the government official and us. So in addition to that, of course, uh, we have to check for things like salmonella or E. coli, uh, I believe every six months, but uh, Kanong does this more frequently than the legal requirement in order to ensure that we deliver safe eggs to our customers every day. So what kind of inputs did you bring to the company to make it better? So when I first joined the company in 2016, the first question I asked myself was, why do we not have a brand? And why do we have to sell under other people's brands? Hmm. And how do we sell under our brand? And how do we increase our brand value was my first question. And of course, after that, for about two years, uh, I was in the service department, servicing machinery, equipment uh, for all our facilities. And eventually I had an opportunity to work on the Omega Egg project. And I was responsible for reaching out to all our friends from all over the world to find out what the best omega-3 supplement is for chicken. Mm -hmm. And the answer was pretty clear. All, all fingers really pointed at DSM's DHA Gold. So that was the easy part. And after that, uh, in 2019, I became director of uh, marketing and sales. And from that point, uh, that was a really pivotal point because we all know that at the end of 2019, COVID came around yep. and we were also experiencing the aftermath of uh, la the previous winter's uh, high pathogenic avian influenza. So we had some shortages as well. And during this shortage, uh, I had to drastically modify our customer portfolio. Previously, we were pretty well grounded as a B2B supplier for larger companies or su supermarkets uh, for their national or for their private brands or uh, catering or even schools. Mm -hmm. And I had to drastically change our portfolio to shift from B2B to B2C. And during the shortage, I made sure that all Kanong branded eggs were prioritized first and then came all the other products. And of course, during this process, we lost a lot of longtime clients as well, but it was, uh, unfortunate thing we had to do to go to the next step, I believe. And since then, uh, uh, we were lucky enough to be prepared for the online market in 2019. And when COVID came around, uh, the online market started expanding like crazy. And fortunately enough, we were able to ride that wave because we were at the right place at the right time with a good product. Exactly. And I can imagine if you have an online market, um, you have the delivery. Yes. Um, eggshells are very important that they are like hard and tough enough, right? Right. Eggshell quality becomes really important when you shift from the traditional offline retailer to online retailers. Because of course, online retailers deliver these eggs, or they pick and pack and then deliver the eggs to the consumers. So it's a much harsher environment for the eggs. And in addition to all the packaging reinforcement we had to do, uh, we really had to focus on eggshell quality as well. And compared to a flock that's just fed with the regular calcium supplements, if you use a DSM's variety of products like OVN and especially Hi-D, 
you really no notice a big difference in eggshell quality. The shell is almost glowing. And, and I know this is a funny term to use, but I like to use the term user experience when it comes to eggshells. Because in the brief moment that the customer takes the egg out from the refrigerator onto your stove, you feel the shell. And when you crack open an egg, it's almost a subliminal experience in how strong the egg shell is. And we had a lot of customers comment on this too. Mm. Because of the eggshell quality that we were able to achieve, uh, we were able to satisfy our uh, retailers and customers alike. And they really did notice the difference. And right now, uh, across all channels, we are recording about 0.3% breakage, which is much lower than the industry average. Oh, that's very good, actually. Yeah, and I love that good crack when I open up my egg yeah. in the morning, <laughs> yes. And I do know that it's, it's a difference uh, across the world, but do you think the Korean market, do they like yellow uh, yolks or more orange yolks? So previously, all eggs were basically pale, uh, maybe six to seven degrees. Mm. Uh, when we first introduced our 12 to 13 degree eggs, we had a lot of complaint from our customers. Oh, really? Customers were accusing us of putting food coloring in the eggs oh. with a needle or feeding the chickens food coloring. Oh, they didn't understand. No, it, they just were not used to it. No. But of course that was years ago and now when we have the occasional pale egg, that's when we get the customer complaint. <laughs> and even me as a farmer, it, when I see a darker yolk, it looks more delicious even to me, even though I know it, it doesn't have a direct correlation. No. But of course, our eggs, since they're fortified with DSMs, vitamins, and uh, various other products, mm -hmm. we were actually just trying to improve our nutrition at first. But what we actually ended up doing was creating the most delicious egg that we ever made. And I think the taste and quality of our eggs really spoke out to our customers. And that resulted in a 30% repurchase rate across all channels, very thankfully. Oh, really? Well, just one last question. What do you think the success factors were in selling eggs online? I would say that uh, there were three success factors involved. First was being in the right place at the right time with the right product. And second was taste and quality. And third was a uh, quick response. And being at the right place at the right time, it was no coincidence. Our upper management, even though they're quite old and they've never bought anything online before, <laughs> they knew that the online market was gonna expand soon. And since 2016, uh, we've been selling eggs online, of course, in very, very small quantities. Yeah. And in 2019, uh, when the bloom of the online market started, we already had a relationship with the online retailers and we were already selling in small quantities. So with the exponential growth of online retailers, we were able to push our own brand uh, through online retailers to gain more brand recognition than we previously had. And the second point, taste and quality, is of course I have a lot of thanks to give to DSM as well, <laughs> but as I mentioned before, I, we ended up creating the most delicious eggs that we ever produced. And customers really do notice the difference. As I mentioned before, we have a 30% repurchase rate across most channels, and that's more than other brands could say, I think. That's really high, yeah. And we, occasionally we find some hardcore fans of our eggs too. And really? <laughs> we get calls from customers saying, oh, they had this problem with their eggs this time, and we offer them to compensate them or send them eggs again. Mm -hmm but they would just say, no, 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 I just love your eggs and I just want you guys to keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. And those are really the most fulfilling moments when the consumer realizes the effort that we put in in order to achieve the taste and quality that we are able to provide.
And the last one was quick response. Mm. Uh, we, Kanong is just uh, one farm, one GP center at the moment. And uh, since Kanong has a firm base in production and we are a farm based company, we're able to quickly respond to consumers' needs. And the beauty of online channels, of course, is the reviews mm. and the tra traceability of consumer behavior. And when we uh, look at our reviews, uh, for the most part, we see what we're doing right, such as yolk or eggshell, eggshell strength and taste. But they also mention uh, things to improve on, such as breakage or the occasional quality issue. And because we have such a firm base in production, we are able to adjust our uh, production methods according to our customers' needs, continuously improving our feed formula, our packaging, and our handling. And I think that really resulted in uh, acceptance in the <laughs> online market. Well, that sounds very good. Thank you very much for your time and good luck with your company. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking your time. Thanks. Great. Thank you for watching Future Feed Talks. If you want to see more episodes or listen to the podcast, click on the links below.